Hello everybody, my name is Emma Duncan. I'm the Professor of Clinical Endocrinology at King's College London and along with Professor Tim Spector, Dr Claire Steves and Professor Sev Orslan, I've been working with the ZOE team on the COVID symptom study in recent times. Recently we've received a lot of questions from app users about periods and vaccination and as I'm a consultant endocrinologist I've been asked to respond to some of those questions and concerns today. The first thing I wanted to talk about though was about normal periods and sexual function more generally. Sex hormones are very responsive to what's going on in life generally. No one who is busy running away from a lion stops to reproduce. Instead, your entire physiology is focused on dealing with the stress in hand. So at times of stress and anxiety, you often see effects on sex hormones manifest most obviously in women by irregular periods and in men with erectile dysfunction. I think we can all acknowledge that the pandemic has been a time of unprecedented stress and anxiety for us all. And I know that for many women also, it's been a time of increased domestic violence. The second thing I'd like to highlight is the relationship between age and irregular periods. The average age for menopause in the United Kingdom is 51, although anywhere really between 45 to 55 is quite usual. Leading up to the menopause, periods become increasingly irregular. Now, as you know, with the vaccination rollout, we started with the oldest and most vulnerable in our communities and then gradually dropped down in age brackets. So giving the background vaccination dates here, women over the age of 50 were invited to come in from vaccination from the 17th of March. Women over 45 were invited up to the 13th of April and women over the age of 40 were invited up to the 30th of April. So as the groups being vaccinated started to include women in their 50s and then women in their 40s, there'd be many women who naturally would be starting to have irregular periods anyway. So working out where the vaccination was having an effect in itself, at least early in the days, um, was going to be tricky. And this is where a large community of app users can really help. So we've had a look at your data that you've been logging through the app. At the end of April, there were 657,000 vaccinated women who were using the app, in whom 630, so that's less than 0.1%, had mentioned abnormalities in menstruation in their free text entries within three months of receiving a vaccination. About two thirds had received AstraZeneca and about one third had received Pfizer. About a quarter of women reported they felt as though they'd had a period triggered by vaccination about a quarter responded that they'd had some disturbance in their menstrual cycle, early, late or missed periods. And about a quarter had said that they'd had a prolonged or an unusually heavy menstrual flow. About 7% said they'd had some symptoms that reminded them of PMS, even though it hadn't correlated with the period necessarily. And in one sense, these are going to be the hardest group of symptoms to differentiate vaccination versus normal cycling, because it's likely that the chemical messengers that are called cytokines, which can be increased after vaccination and are also increased um, at different points in the menstrual cycle, um, that this overlap will make it difficult to pass the two. As the invitations to vaccination have gone out to women in the younger age groups, and also as the media has started to make quite a lot of commentary with some articles of greater accuracy than others, as you might expect, there've been more reports received through the app. In total now from our app user community, 710,000 vaccinated women have been reporting regularly and 3,100 women have been reporting symptoms. So it's about 0.5% of our app using vaccinated population. In thinking about this uh, and with respect to coronavirus um, uh, immunisation, um, I suppose a, a question before we think about that is, has this been seen with other vaccinations previously? And the answer here is yes, there has been some reports of period irregularity with some vaccinations in the past, particularly with respect to HPV. But this usually settles down quickly in a month or two and doesn't have any long-term effects on fertility, cycling or subsequent pregnancies. In thinking about the trials for the current vaccines, this was specifically reported. So thinking about the AstraZeneca trial um, in the supplementary information on side effects, which you can find online, and we'll put a link below the, um, the document today, the video today, 0.1% um, of participants uh, reported issues. And this was seven individuals amongst 12,000 people who were involved in the trial. And it's also worth mentioning that some people in the placebo group also reported some issues there too. So it does occur occasionally, but not in very many women. 
in thinking about what our app users are reporting and possible explanations. As I've mentioned, some people are reporting symptoms like PMS, and this might be related to cytokines triggered by vaccination, causing very similar symptoms to those experienced by women who experience PMS. Some women are reporting changes in menstrual flow, and certainly in those women who are taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or aspirin to help deal with post-vaccination side effects of say fever or aches and pains, this may alter bleeding patterns and may notice a difference in flow. Some women are reporting earlier and other women are reporting slightly later periods. And here I'd just like to discuss the timing of menstruation. Uh, because this is something which is mainly influenced by events that happen a couple of weeks earlier. In a typical 28-day cycle, ovulation will usually occur on day 14. The egg's released from a follicle in the ovary and then travels down the fallopian tubes towards the uterus. The empty follicle then uh, converts to become a corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone, which promotes gestation. This prepares the uterus in case of a pregnancy. But if the egg isn't fertilized, the corpus luteum breaks down, causing progesterone and other hormones from the ovary to fall. The uterine lining uh, disintegrates and subsequently is shed. And that's what's experienced um, as a period. So all of these events are taking place in the fortnight before actual menstruation. So in that context, it's quite hard to think about a unifying explanation that might cause some women to say things are occurring earlier and some things later, particularly given the time frame involved. But we certainly will continue to think about this. Is it worth your while thinking and reporting it? And the answer is absolutely yes. Unexpected bleeding, missed periods and heavy and uncomfortable periods, they're real and they're distressing events. However, based on your reporting, reporting from other women around the world um, with respect to their real world experiences after vaccination against COVID-19, the trial data from these vaccines and previous data from other types of vaccination. These issues appear to be uncommon and if they do occur, they appear very unlikely to persist very long at most one or two cycles. And I really want to emphasise that the most important thing for all of us at the moment is to accept vaccination when offered the opportunity, because this is the main way that we're going to end the pandemic together. So in terms of what we can do and how we can find more information, first of all, if you've not been vaccinated, please get one as soon as you're eligible. Of course, if you're experiencing problems with irregular periods or unusual bleeding for more than one or two cycles, you should go and talk about this with your GP. Thank you for continuing to contribute daily because your input means we can build up a nationwide picture of trending symptoms and hotspots um, and your contributions are absolutely invaluable and crucial to helping us continue our research. Uh, and I'm told that I need to ask you to please remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be informed as soon as a video goes live. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.